Hi everyone, today we are going to solve an example using Newton's law. Let's read the example. Two blocks, M1 and M2, are connected together with a massless string suspended over a massless frictionless pulley as shown in the figure. Block M1 sits on a frictionless surface and block M2 is suspended by the string with tension T. A force, F external, acts on block M1 as shown to the left. Block M1 moves with constant speed. What must be true about the magnitude of the force, F external? A. F external equals M1G, B, F external equals M2G, C, F external equals T, D, the magnitude of F external depends on the direction block M1 is moving, E, at least two of the answers A to D are correct, F not enough information is given to choose one of the answers A to E. When it comes to solving problems using Newton's law, I always follow a few steps, regardless of how hard the example is. Step one is to draw a free body diagram. For each object. If I draw object M1 right in here, the forces acting on it are F external, as is stated in the example, the force of gravity. This is the force from the earth acting on M1. It's downward. I'm going to call it F1G which is equal to M1G. M1 is on a surface. Therefore, the surface is going to apply a normal force. We're going to call it N. The normal force is always perpendicular to the surface acting on M1. The string is touching M1. Therefore, it's going to apply a tension force, which is a pulling force. Note that the tension forces are always pulling forces. Therefore, they're always towards the string. There are no other object touching M1. Therefore, these are the only forces acting on M1. I should note that the surface is frictionless. Therefore, the surface is not going to apply any friction forces on M1. Now, let's draw block M2. The forces acting on M2 are the gravitational force. This is the force from the Earth on M2. I'm going to call it F2G, which is equal to M2 times G. The string is attached to M2. Therefore, it is going to apply the tension force, which is a pulling force and therefore it is towards the string. I have called both of my tension forces T. Because this string is massless, therefore the tension is the same everywhere in the string. And therefore, these two tension forces are equal. Well, there are no other objects touching M2, therefore these are the only two forces acting on M2. Let's move on to step two. Step two is to pick a positive direction for X and y axis. If 
I assume that, if I assume that the system is moving this way, I can say, well, I can take this way as a positive direction. Therefore, for m1 to the left is the positive direction of x, and up is the positive direction for y. Similarly, for m2, the positive direction is towards the left for the x-axis, and for the y-axis, the positive direction is upward. Now let's move on to step three. Use Newton's second law for each object separately. For block M1, I am going to write Newton's law in both the x and y directions. F net x equals M A x. I just want to mention that I never use F equals M A. F equals M A is a vector equation. We don't want to mix up the forces along the x axis with the forces along the y-axis. Therefore, I would always recommend using Newton's law in both directions separately. So F net x is the sum of all the forces along the x-axis is equal to m times ax, and ax is the acceleration of object m1 along the x-axis. F net y equals m a y, and f net y is sum of all the forces acting on m1 along the y-axis. And ay is the acceleration of m1 along the y-axis. f net x, therefore, would be equal to f external, which is a positive force in this case, because I defined the positive to be to the left. So f external minus a t, t is negative because it's towards the right and the right is the negative direction. So f external minus t equals m1 times the acceleration of m1 along the x-axis. f net y, it would be n minus f1g, which I'm going to call it m1g, is equal to m1 times the acceleration of m1 along the y-axis. Because the example was stated that block M1 moves with a constant speed, the acceleration of M1 along the x-axis is zero. Therefore, the first equation is simplified to f external equals t. M1 does not go up and down. Therefore, its acceleration along the y-axis is also zero. So the second equation in simply, is simplified to n equals m1g. Now let's look at object 2, m2. I'm going to write Newton's second law for object 2 as well. f net x equals max and f net y equals may. Well, the x direction, in the x direction, Newton's law is not going to help us in here because we don't have any forces acting on m2 along the x-axis. Along the y-axis, the sum of the forces would be t, which is upward positive, minus m2g equals m2. Well, the acceleration, sorry, here I have m a y in here, the acceleration of m2 along the y-axis is zero. Why? It's because m2 is moving with a constant speed as well as m1, because they are connected together with a string. If m1 is moving with a constant speed, m2 has to move with a constant speed. Therefore, I have zero in here. So this part of the equation is zero. Therefore, my equation is simplified to t equals m2g. t equals m2g and f external equals t from the first block, now we can 
make a conclusion about that f external also equals m2g. So knowing this, I can look at all my options in here. Well, f external equals m1g, I don't see that in here. f external equals m2g, I have it in here, so b is the correct answer. Also, c is the correct answer because f external equals t, I have it right in here. That means that we have two correct answers. So therefore, the right answer would be E. At least two of the answers, A to D, are correct.